Why is everyone dancing in the streets? Tonight, there's going to be a lot of fiesta going on. Well, it happens to be Mexico's Independence Day. And in Mexico, most celebrations like this happen in the Zocalo. Such as tonight, here in the great city of Puebla. The Zocalo in Puebla is the best place to start for best things to see. Puebla has some of the best tour routes I've encountered and they start here. At the Zocalo you can also find restaurants, cafes, and naturally one of the oldest churches around. The Puebla Cathedral was built with black limestone and construction began in 1557. The tour buses explore the beauty and the history of Puebla where there are no shortages of colorful barrios, beautiful architecture, monuments, and plazas. But just walking distance from the Socolo is an area that offers great photo ops, plazas, and more churches naturally. And of course, El Parian, where you can find an abundance of souvenirs and crafts. A quick Uber drive across town will take you to La Estrella de Puebla. The Star of Puebla holds the world record for the tallest transportable Ferris wheel, and it offers a beautiful view of the city. and the Popocatépetl on a clear day, and I'm sure I murdered that. <laughs> this Ferris wheel stands 260 feet tall. The cycle takes for about 20 minutes to complete, and the cost is 40 pesos, or around $2. If you are sports-minded, and if it's baseball season, <laughs> They have a minor league team. They play at the Hermano Cerdan Stadium. In the same complex is the Cuauhtémoc Stadium where their pro soccer team plays. And they actually played last night. Unfortunately, I checked the schedule one day too late. <laughs> the GMP Auditorium houses events from basketball games to concerts. And today, a well-known Puerto Rican pop singer named Cheyenne will be in concert. So if you will be in Puebla, do check the sports and entertainment schedule. Do not be like Andy. <laughs> Gracias, Armando. De nada. <laughs> Saludos, California. Hello, everybody. Happy Cinco de Mayo Day. It's actually not Cinco de Mayo. It's, it's October. But um, I bet you didn't know where Cinco de Mayo took place. In Mexico. Yeah, you probably knew that. Puebla is where the two forts... Puebla is where two forts exist, where the Battle of Puebla took place. And this is where the Mexican army defeated the invading French. Sergeant. Yes, Captain. Take some of your army men and see if you can surprise them around the side. I mean, gather some of your troops and see if you can flank them. Yes, Captain. We'll hide behind that big silver and black rock. And Sergeant. Yes, Captain. Get somebody to take care of those brave wounded men in battle. Yes, Captain. But they weren't wounded in battle. They are FDS. FDS? 
Yes. Factory defected supply. They cannot stand on their own. Oh, those poor bastards. Oh, hey guys. You startled me. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's, uh, let's have a conversation, huh? Uh, Puebla, that's, that's a good topic. Did you know? Uh, just, just pick up my army mint. <laughs> you know, Cinco de Mayo is huge, as you all know, in the United States. In fact, it doesn't take much research to learn that beer sales on Cinco de Mayo rivals that of Super Bowl Sunday north of the border. But people north of the border, they, they don't fully understand the significance of this day. On the other hand, I don't believe that the Mexican Department of Tourism fully understands the popularity of this day in the United States. I think they're missing a huge opportunity here to make this historic area, this, this great historic area, more easy to access for gringos like me. It should be uh, advertised and it should be made more English friendly. It was my experience when I showed up. Yeah, I was really excited because you all know how much I love history. <laughs> but while visiting, um, I was immediately confronted with requirements. Um, I, I couldn't take pictures from outside of the museum uh, without having to pay first. There's a great panoramic view of the city of Puebla from that museum. And plus I was probably a little hungry and tired from getting out there. But needless to say, I was a bit frustrated and um, I started collecting my things. I wasn't going to pay. And at this moment, I don't know if he's the curator or the supervisor manager, but Miguel Diaz stepped up. He, uh, he understood that I was frustrated. So he knew I was interested in that view. He actually walked me up. He took me to the roof of the museum and tourists aren't allowed up there. In fact, I don't think people are. It's physically roped off. It doesn't have a velvet rope. It is roped with knots. But he untied that all and took me up there and the view was phenomenal. So I was really uh, appreciative of him for that. If you're interested in knowing about Cinco de Mayo, the Fuerte de Guadalupe Museum is the place to go. It's interesting how they incorporated the museum into what was left of the fort's walls. Nearby is an interactive museum where you can learn the details of the battle as well as the important players that were involved. As you well know by now, Puebla as well as Mexico are into their monuments. There is a beautiful monument just outside of the fort. I noticed people gathering by the monument fountain. It seems they've accepted the challenge of staying dry while trying to walk through or run through. I had to try. I didn't take two steps into the fountain before I was drenched. It's a half a mile walk from the Fort of Guadalupe to visit the fully restored Fort of Laredo. Both forts are on opposite sides of this beautiful park, which also includes other museums such as the Museum of Evolution and several places to eat as well.